Hey, this is Nika Monfort, a.k.a. Tech Savvy Diva. Yo, this is Terrence Gaines, a.k.a. Brother Tech. And welcome to the Snob OS Show, the show for Apple snobs where we talk all things Apple and then some. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest installment of the Snob OS Show. We definitely want to thank you for tuning in each and every week with us again. Um, if you want to uh, get a little extra content, um, watch the show live, get some exclusive content, you can head on over to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash snobawestcast to get all of those details. So let's go ahead and jump into this week's show. We're going to kick it off with the lowdown where we talk all things Apple. And honestly, this show might be an all Apple show. Why? Because the Let Loose Apple event was held yesterday. If you're listening to this show live, if you're listening to it recorded, it was on Tuesday where Apple announced the latest and greatest in the iPad range of products. Um, we've mentioned before that this is the first update in um, iPads um, in about over a year. So um, lots to get into on that. So we'll just go ahead and kick it off. We'll go over the products that were um, that were announced. I'm sure by now pretty much everybody knows a lot of the specs. So we're just gonna get into um, some of our thoughts on the products and um, we'll go from there. So um, I have a list of order in our notes, but I'm actually going to uh, go in the order that um, things were announced. Okay. So uh, Tim Cook uh, jumped out and started with Vision Pro. He was like, hey, don't forget about Vision Pro. And he talked about some of the uses um, that Vision Pro, ha Vision Pro has been used in outside of the consumer product um, uh, use cases. Um, he highlighted um, some medical use cases, some uh, some use cases with Porsche, and you know, basically highlighting the enterprise um, use of the Apple Vision Pro, which mm -hmm. I think is likely meant to be the true, um, you know, use behind the Apple Vision Pro, especially with a thirty five hundred dollar price tag and issues with battery life. So I don't think it was necessarily meant to be one of those devices that you can kind of take outside and just use in your everyday life. But well, he was well, like, not hey. well, not right now. Um, yeah, not in this version. Yeah, eventually they'll get and maybe maybe in this version. I just think there needs more support. There needs more third party app developers. And I think Apple is kind of like, ah, oh, this is enterprise until all the developers hop on board, the popular ones, the streaming yeah. services, the games, the productivity apps, you know, once they start to get third party developers well, then Apple would be like, surprise, Apple Vision Pro was for consumers all along. It's like, all right, all right, we got it. We, we yeah. And I think they uh, recognize they need to do something with the battery situation because yeah. it doesn't have a very long battery life. So I think this first iteration is, you know, their first foray into it. And we've talked about, you know, innovation, uh, new technology, because this is something completely new for Apple and the way that they are using it and the way that they are promoting it is not necessarily along the same lines as say an Oculus, um, where it's more for gaming. Um, you know, they've introduced this or, um, presented it, you know, more on some of the productivity side. And that's likely because they didn't have some of the, up, as you mentioned, some of the other um, big um, apps on board from Jump so that it could be more of a entertainment type uh, deal. So they kind of went with what they had. Um, so he went through that. Then um, we got into the new iPad Air. I think mm -hmm. that was next. I think the iPad Air was next. And um, I think the biggest thing with the iPad Air, um, a new 13-inch iPad Air. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, comes in some four new colors. And I think, I don't know. I'll get your thoughts on this. What are your, I guess, what are you thinking now that they have this 13-inch, um, a full 13-inch iPad Air, and we all know that the MacBook Air, it comes in a 13-inch model. Um, I guess, what are your thoughts on how, what the the way they presented this, uh, this Air, this new Air, how it really fits into, I guess, usage for, for people? Well, they made a, um, purposely did not mention 
<laughs> laptop quality uh, uh, productivity uh, simply because this may butt up against, you know, the MacBook Airs that are also 13 inch screens. You know, we all know that while full computing on an iPad is getting better, there still are some things that the MacBook does better, specifically apps, right? Mm -hmm. uh, with the MacBook, you can download apps from the Mac App Store, but you can also download them from websites, third-party developers, what else, whatever the case may be. Apple has gone, uh, has gone a long way with the Mac to say, hey, are you sure you trust this app? And they put all these kind of little guardrails in the way to make mm -hmm. sure if you are downloading an app from the website, from a third-party developer, from anybody not Apple, be warned, we told you so if something goes wrong, right? Right. With the iPad, it's still... It's either on the web, if the website or third party site or whatever the case may be has a dope web interface, then that'll look very nice on an iPad. If they don't, most websites, if they do have a specific iPad app, they will force you into that mobile app experience, which if you are doing work, that may be a learning curve that you're just not ready to tackle right now. It's like, mm -hmm. I do this a certain way on my Mac. I expect to do this a certain way on my iPad. That's not the case. I'm not with it. <laughs> so they still have a little ways to go, but as far as price and as far as size is concerned, they mm -hmm. are kind of butting up with people actually deciding, well, do I really need a MacBook? And they're really going to have to have somebody explain to them the pros and the cons because um, this this uh, MacBook Air 13 inch, I think it is. Uh, what is it? Uh, the 13 inch is 7.99, and that's for the baseline one. So that's mm -hmm. not if you add the Magic Keyboard. That's like 200 dollars. That's not if you add more storage. That can get you up 100, 200, 300 dollars. You're up to 13, 1400 dollars, which is the price of a 13 inch MacBook Air. Yeah. Uh, so as far as that's concerned, yeah, it could butt up. But, you know, still, they're kind of a separate device yeah. for now, for now, like say, give it another year or two, you know, more uh, third party developers, maybe either adopt the web app interface, you know, yeah. or Apple allows third party developers to sideload apps onto the MacBook Air, similar to how they are eventually going to have to do that on the iPhone. If mm -hmm. Apple lets third-party developers sideload, same way you would download an app from a, from the website for a MacBook, if you can kind of do the same thing, air quotes, on a MacBook Air, then you can say, all right, now I really got to make a decision. Can I get a slim, ultra-portable MacBook Air, not a MacBook, an iPad Air, or do I go with a traditional laptop? Yeah, and so a little bit of background, um, the iPad Air, it, of course, comes in 11-inch model and a 13-inch model, 11-inch starting at $599, 13-inch um, starting at $799 for both those base models. You could actually order those on Tuesday with them um, being available on Friday. So by the time this sh show comes out, um, you could likely just pop into a store and pick up one if you haven't ordered one already. Again, it has four new colors. They're very light, pastel-y like almost reminds me of like Easter colors. Mm -hmm. um, it has the M2 chip, um, uh, touch ID. It has Wi-Fi 6E. Um, it has a liquid retina display. It's compatible. We'll talk a little bit more with the Apple Pencil Pro um, 12 megapixel camera. The 12 uh, megapixel uh, front camera is also in landscape mode now. If you look at any, not any iPad, if you look at the front facing camera, you uh it's on the side if you lay it on the side but typically it's in portrait now they've turned the camera to where it's in landscape so if you're using it similar to a laptop style like in a mm -hmm. keyboard or a folio that the camera is now front and center versus on the side and it does have um stage manager so as you move the camera kind of tracks you um, as well. And speaking of, you know, the, the camera being in landscape, of course, a little window where you view the person you're looking at is in landscape mode. It's all um, in the horizontal landscape type of feature. So um, that was iPad Air. Um, next up, we got to the, um, did we talk about the pencil next? I think the pixel, pencil 
Well, as far as the event, I think they did run through the pro and then went into the pencil. And then they did the pencil, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because they did the accessories last. Okay. So the big, I guess, the biggest um, part of the event uh, was the announcement of the new iPad Pro. Mm -hmm. Um, And it comes with this new, what do they call it? XDR, Ultra XDR liquid uh, display. Um, it's, it's super, super thin. Um, and I think, you know, we talked about it before how folks are going to do their typical bin test, you know, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. It's too thin. It breaks. I can't put it in my back pocket. It's not meant to be. But again, the iPad pro is coming in an 11 inch model, uh, 11 inch model and a 13 inch model again similar to kind of what we talked about with the air as far as the the screen size um right so the ipad pro has always not always has in previous generations had a 11 inch and a 12.9 inch 12.9 technically you can call it 13 inch but Uh, now you got the full Right, right, but iPad Air is the 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 latest device to add a thirteen, a 13 inch, inch device. Uh, with the iPad Pro, you mentioned that the display, uh, it is an OLED display, so I guess that's going to get better. I really can't tell, but people say OLED screens are better than whatever the screen is on previous generations. And like yeah, didn't you mentioned, say something about a mirror or something? I thought I was trying to find it now, in my notes. A tandem, they call it a tandem OLED, so they kind of use the apple's logo the lingo was they take they took two oled displays and smashed them together so you can get these many more pixels and this many more nits of brightness and yada 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 i'm not a specs person as you can tell yeah (laughs) you know (laughs) but um apple did kind of um take a lot of effort to talk about that and they talk a lot of effort to like nika mentioned talk about how it's thinner according to apple this is the thinnest Apple product ever. So it's thinner than any iPhone, thinner than all the previous generation iPads. So I am surprised. Like uh, we talked about on the uh, DTNS, you would, I would have thought they would have made the iPad Air the thinnest Apple product ever because it's light and airy. So I'm thinking, okay, they're going to make the iPad, right. But actually, the, and you would assume the iPad Pro, since it's got more guts, it's faster, better processor, yada, yada, yada. You would think that would be a little bit thicker, but it sounds like they did a reverse. The iPad Air is a more thicker device. It's got more bezel space mm-hmm. versus the iPad Pro. Hardly no bezels at all. And then it's the thinnest device ever. So we'll let Apple decide. I guess they needed to justify the extra cost, but I would assume the Air would be the lightest, thinnest device ever, but I guess that's not the case. And um, these devices are starting with, I think, what is it, 256 gig uh, is the base model of storage. And then it goes up to two terabytes of storage. Um, These start at, I think the 11 inch starts at $999 and the 13 inch starts at uh, basically $1,200. Oh, it's Mm -hmm. Um, $1,299. And again, these were both available to order on Tuesday, so you can order them now. And if you're listening to the show um, when it's published, um, it's actually out in stores now. Of course, it's coming in its traditional silver and space black. A little bit about the specs. It um, has, of course, Face ID. It does have that landscape 12 uh, megapixel front camera. I mentioned the Ultra Retina XDR, which is the new OLED screen. Um, four new speakers. Of course, you have the two different sizes. Again, pros res, um, and up to as I mentioned, the two terabyte storage. But you also um, mentioned that this is the first Apple device to have the M4 chip. Did you mention that right. already? Nope, okay. that's what I was okay. getting to next. Oh, the, I, I jumped in line. My bad, my bad, my jumped bad. a little ahead, but that's okay. Uh, the other big thing about the uh, new iPad Pro is that it has a new Apple Silicon chip, which is the M4. So again, the way I see these chips, you know, you can get down into chip size, cores and transistors and neural engines, all that 
you know, stuff. Basically, it's just faster than the previous one. And it gives you the ability, it's, it's allowing all of the things that we mentioned on the iPad to move and process more quickly. You have this OLED display, so you have to be concerned about snap and how you know your fingers move and how it responds to your fingers. So all these things allow for the iPad to function as it does. And I, I do wanna mention, um, during the announcement, they talked quite a bit about some of the um, software that is going to be hugely beneficial to me, it, it, it's geared towards creators, whether you are a um, content creator in the video audio space, because they talked about um, Final Cut Pro, how you can use multiple cameras and all these things and um, Procreate and, you know, all of these fanciful, wonderful things that you can do. Um, and this chip is what's powering and allowing all of these new, um, along with the, uh, the OS, these new programs to really allow you to get the best, um, you know, usage out of out of this camera. I mean, out of this device. Mm -hmm. um, and I was very, I'm interested to see and to get your opinion on. I on several of the products that they mentioned was it Final Cut Camera and the Procreate. Um, uh, software, mm -hmm. how they how they kept mentioning machine learning powered this, machine learning powered mm -hmm. that. I, mm -hmm. when they were saying that, because previously they haven't really mentioned um, AI or really too much about machine learning in some of the software that it, 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 it uses. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought I kind of like picked up on that. I was like, they are really kind of driving home this machine learning backed um, software that they're announcing along with this iPad. Mm -hmm. So any thoughts on that? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the only issue with those is they got to pay for the subscriptions. I don't know about yeah. Logic Pro, but the Final Cut Pro, you have to pay uh, either $5 a month or I think $50 a year. Um, I guess that works for people who are mobile, but if you... I look at Logic Pro and I look at Final Cut Pro on a tablet as a accessory to Logic Pro and Final Cut Pro on a MacBook. Mm -hmm. And if you are deep into using those products on a regular, then you've probably already paid the two, three hundred bucks for the full blown, <coughs> excuse me, the full blown laptop experience. I don't know if I personally, I don't speak for myself. I'm not also then paying, you know, a subscription or a yearly um, fee to also use it on my tablet, mm -hmm. you know, but that's just me. Um, there are a lot of professionals who are always on the go. You know, they're at client shoots, they're at, you know, client um, visits or whatever the case may be, and they mm -hmm. want to pack as light as possible. <clears throat> so maybe that is a benefit, but for those people, um, they have packed a lot of features into uh, those two applications specifically, making them more touch, um, what's the word, uh, touch proficient, I guess we'll call it. Mm -hmm. I guess the first instances, some things were touch, but you then had to use the, to get the full experience, you needed a mouse or mm -hmm. use the trackpad in the magic keyboard to actually use more of the functionality. Well, now with these two new updates, they said they rebuilt them from the ground up to take full advantage of the touchscreen. So if you are using Final Cut Pro to edit videos, you know, you're using Logic Pro to do audio, then everything as far as the um, experience can be done via touch. And I'm curious to see how that works because I'm so, so I use Final Cut Pro to, well, we both use Final Cut mm -hmm. Pro to edit and upload and publish the show, right? I'm so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a special Logitech mouse that gives me the ability to program it so specifically to the specific use cases that I have for mm -hmm. Final Cut Pro. 
I am not going to try to do, and what, let me before I say that I'm so bad to where if I'm like going to do some work away from my uh, desk and I have to take mm-hmm. my MacBook with me, if I don't take that mouse, I'm still kind of like I'm lost in the world. Right? How do you, I do this? Just using the trackpad, so I can imagine trying to then edit or whatever, do my normal process, my normal workflow just via touch i would be lost Mm -hmm. to where i was just like you know what i'm not trying to learn this process all over again for the few couple times that i may consider doing anything using final cut pro on my ipad so all around the world to say for those people who just want a mobile or a more portable experience i could see them jumping into this and getting everything they need i'm curious as to how that will work for people who are switching back and forth between Final mm-hmm. Cut Pro and an iPad is all touch and Final Cut Pro or Logic Pro on a MacBook to where you're using mostly keyboard and mouse. Yeah. And so that was going to be my next thing. Who do you really think Apple, I won't say made the device for, but who do you think was a target for this Apple event? Because it, to me, I'll say it seemed it was geared more towards enterprise people because I'm thinking if you are a production company if you are you know uh, uh, entertainment music TV you can give these iPads out to your team if you're on location doing something and you need to kind of whip up something on the fly outside of someone who wants hey is like hey I'm in the market for a new iPad they got some new ones I'll get this but to me the whole announcement seemed pretty targeted and it wasn't to me, it didn't seem as if it was targeted to your casual user. Well, I could definitely, so um, again, making this personal, I have a daughter who is a, who's my artsy, she's my artsy fartsy kid, right? Mm -hmm. And I could definitely see getting, you know, like spending money to get her an iPad Pro and Apple Pencil and like the mad the expensive magic keyboard and that be her main device she mm-hmm. had i got her a uh, m1 mac mini that she uses the game on and mm-hmm. that would be the only thing she does with that is to do gaming everything mm-hmm. else because she's she's she does art she knows procreate which is a super popular i think they mentioned uh, they procreate, did yeah during the event she's heavy into not heavy I want her to be more heavy into mm-hmm. digital art. Uh, she's a good, she's a good artist. I, you know what, you know, parents always pump up the kids, but you know, just objectively, you know, mm-hmm. speaking, she's talented as far as art is concerned. So I would mm-hmm. want, I would want to push her as much as possible, especially as it relates to digital. So I mm-hmm. can see all again, <laughs> I'm getting long winded here all the way around the world to say <laughs> I could, I see Apple pushing this towards students. We're talking college Mm -hmm. students, upcoming college students, because like I mentioned, pretty much most of their work is done on computers. The kids know how to see their grades. They know how to talk to their teachers. They know how to sign up for classes. They know how to send emails to the teachers to let them know, you know, if I'm not going to be in the class, if I'm sick, how do I catch up? They know how to do that digitally now. These kids Mm -hmm. are on it, right? Yeah. So I could see high school, maybe even college student, getting them an iPad Pro, spending the money and be done with it. Don't need a laptop. And that's it. You know, there was a video. Apple did a commercial maybe three, four years ago where they had a kid with a cellular iPad and she was going throughout her day. She would go here and she would, you know, draw something. She would go to another spot and kind of FaceTime with her friends. She would pack up the iPad and go to another spot and get some work done. I could Mm -hmm. see that, that being the, like you mentioned, the audience for for an iPad would be these kids and these high schoolers and these college kids to where all you need is an iPad and enough storage and you can do everything pretty much. I think that's, in my opinion, that's where I would want Apple to push this towards the students and these kids who are, you know, super technologically inclined to where they can work around the uh, pitfalls of maybe not having a full-blown desktop experience because Mm -hmm. all they use is apps. So they don't care whether or not they can figure out their workflow on a laptop. They don't, they've been using iPads all day long. So they'll, they'll get the learning curve faster than somebody like me would. 
Yeah. And now that you mention it, because I was wondering, um, I have it, you know, for us to talk about a little bit later, but wondering why we have WWDC next month. Why do this event so close rather than, you know, do it maybe in like how they have done it earlier in like a spring event, maybe March. Why do it now? But honestly, now that you talk about the angle from students, it's graduation time. Kids are graduating from high school, going to mm -hmm. college, mm -hmm. um, graduating from college. So this may be one of those times where it's like, hey, let's uh, let's uh, let's get in on people trying to um, buy um, presents and right. gifts for the grad um, in their life, whether it's from middle school, whether it's from high school to college. So. You know what? Uh, that kind of makes sense. And and if the rumors are true, it's AI season. You know, mm -hmm. WWDC, you know, we all are expecting Apple to like really leap into this whole AI arms race. And in order for them to do that, they need to make sure they've got products out the door that can support these things. Right. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, the way Apple works is everything is on device. All the yeah. security features is on the device. You know, all the protections, all the privacy, all those functionalities, Siri, all that mm -hmm. functionality is done, that processing is done on device. So you can imagine or you can you can uh, fortune tell and foreshadow that when they do this whole AI thing, when they announce it, let's just say they announce it next month at WWDC, you can pretty much ass assume that a lion's share of that work is going to be done on device. Yeah. So it makes sense for Apple to launch an iPad Pro with an M4 chip. And it makes sense for them to launch an iPad Air with an M2 chip. And mm -hmm. all this extra features and all this CPU processing power. It's all because a setup. It's, gonna, it's, gonna <laughs> it's need ramping that. up to something. It's going to need that for this AI when they launch or whatever it's going to do. Because like you mentioned, they talked about Logic Pro. They talked about um, um, uh, Final Cut Pro. And they mentioned mm -hmm. machine learning. And they mentioned yep. generative AI. So it mm -hmm. makes sense for them to have these devices out the door first. So when they do say, this is our new AI project, they've mm -hmm. already got devices that can support it. Yep. And speaking on things you can do with the iPad Pro, um, it was announced post event that the full Apple event was um, shot on an iPhone. Um, they are thinking it was an um, iPhone 15 but in addition to it being shot on um, an iPhone uh, 15, it was also edited on a Mac and on an iPad. So mm -hmm. it's giving you, you know, real world, hey, you know, this if is what we can we do have, it, you can do it. And this is what we used to do our event that all of you tuned in to watch. Another thing, um, Tim Cook had on some kicks. You are the sneakerhead of, of this duo. Um, he had on some, um, One I think it was 86 mm -hmm. um, Air Maxes that were designed mm -hmm. um, on the new iPad Air. Even on the shoe itself, it had on the little, what do you call it, the bib, the mm -hmm. tongue of the mm -hmm. shoe, mm -hmm. um, made um, on I uh, made on iPad, and you know it referenced you know some of the design for us all you know based on on. Um, the swoosh on it was based off of, um, you know, it was inspired by the Apple Pencil. Um, so it just goes to show that all these things um, that they did in preparation for the event were um, were done with the devices that they were chilling, basically telling you, hey, you should buy this. Yeah. Now, um, of course, <laughs> they've got extra lighting and they've got extra yeah. microphones and they've got extra lenses that attach to the iPhone. So don't go yeah. out here thinking that you're going to be able to shoot <laughs> a Apple level event, you know, family event, you know, on your iPhone and your iPad. Relax. But at the same time, they're there. It's going to look pretty good, but it's not going to look like this because well, this is done professionally. Well, they're putting their money where their mouth is. You know, I'm pretty sure there have been plenty of um, brands who have shot commercials. They have done things promoting their devices. Like think of an auto manufacturer. You know, mm -hmm. they you know, they show you show especially the thing I hate. Right. They show the SUVs and mm -hmm. SUVs going through the mountaintops like they're really mm -hmm. like we are like consumers 
are I really, can take this and do that. <laughs> right. I, I'm uh, the reason I need to buy an SUV is because I need to go off road, you yeah. know, through some construction site or whatever the case may be. And the people actually shooting those commercials with their own vehicles, they probably got to the set in like a Range Rover or something, but they're promoting yeah. the Acura or whatever the case may and be. And they're professional drivers who are doing this. Exactly. Versus <laughs> a, 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 a family, right? Right. You know, Apple's like, all right, well, we don't want to uh, say, well, you can do all this fancy shooting and editing on an iPad and iPro, an iPhone, mm -hmm. and they've got $100,000 cameras that they're recording on, and they've got, yeah. you know, this farm, this, this you know, farm of you know, high processing computers to make yeah. this video. There's like, no, you know, we shot it on our products that we are mm -hmm. promoting to you. So, you know, we get a little bit of credit for that. <laughs> yep. Um, so outside of that big hardware, there were some accessories announced, a new magic keyboard for the iPad Pro 13 inch, um, and also uh, for the 11 inch as well. So making it a little bit easier to use. The other big um, announcement in the accessory space, uh, a new Apple Pencil Pro um, that was launched as well. It has some new gestures, uh, new haptics. Um, so basically um, double tap. Of course, you typically have a pencil, you double tap it. Um, they have this thing called a barrel roll. You can squeeze the pencil mm -hmm. and um, get different functionality as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the biggest thing that people are most excited about is now this Apple Pencil Pro will show up in Find My. Mm -hmm. If anybody knows um, anything about the lovely Apple Pencil, mm -hmm. you can lose it very mm -hmm. easily mm -hmm. there are many times where i've used it and i've put it down and i don't know where i put it mm -hmm. and it just shows up randomly when i'm looking for something else i was like oh here's the pencil right i found it so um a lot of people were really excited as i am about the apple pencil pro um being in find my um one well, of the other things i talked about uh a hover uh uh feature where basically you can hover the pencil over where you're going and it'll right. put like a dot. Or to you can indicate. highlight, yeah, you can highlight yeah. things without touching a screen. You can, you yeah. know, make selections without actually touching a screen. Um, the barrel roll thing that you mentioned, if you're drawing or writing and you kind of twist the, um, twist it. Yeah, twist the Apple pencil, it'll change the orientation slow. Like if you're highlighting something from left to right, but you also want to highlight something from top to down just twist the pencil and then you can then highlight from up to yeah. down. And then like you mentioned, it does do haptic feedback, which is important. Like if you are, you know, double tapping to change the uh, different uh, options. The or pin doing, strokes, for instance. Right. Or you're squeezing to pull up the uh, also the additional features. You get haptic feedback when it's doing that because there have been times with the Apple Pencil 2 that I have to where you double tap but you really don't know if it's done anything. If it actually did it. <laughs> but the, Right, right. With this haptic feedback, you can definitely uh, get that. Um, uh, in addition to pressure sensitivity and all the other things that yeah. it's had before, what's interesting about the Apple Pencil Pro is it's not all of the features are not compatible with all of the iPads. So if you have just a regular ninth or 10th generation iPad, if you have just a regular iPad Air and you decide you want to get an iPad uh, an Apple Pencil Pro, be careful because all of those features may not be available, right? So, so for example, my wife has a ninth generation iPad, so it doesn't have the boxy, the squared off look um, of the iPad Air or the iPad Pros. So she can't get the Apple Pencil Pro and uh, magnetically attach it and charge it to her iPad. In addition to that, None of these features will be available. The double tap, the barrel roll, the haptic feedback, because she doesn't have the the iPad Pro or she doesn't have the new 11 inch or 13 inch iPad Air. Some of those features want to be available. So Apple has four pencils. They have the original Apple Pencil. They have the Apple Pencil 2. They have the Apple Pencil USB-C. And now they have the Apple Pencil Pro. So you really have to be careful and really 
to figure out, okay, which iPad I have, which features do I want, and then let those decide which Apple Pencil you get. You just can't go get any Apple Pencil yeah. and just use it. There's some you got to do some figuring out, you know, and Apple has this some configurations and yeah, yeah, some configurations, right? So they do uh, Apple has tried to kind of like do a side by side of all the Apple pencils. And they also on the website give you this ability to actually click and say, you know, find the Apple pencil that works with your iPad. So you go mm -hmm. and select your model and they've got all the all the iPads listed. Once you select your model, then it'll tell you which I which Apple pencil works best. So you got to be mindful of that. Just don't think you can get an Apple pencil and all these features going to be made available to you. You got to got to pay attention. And um, also along those lines, um, the Apple Pencil Pro, of course, is compatible with the new devices. So you're good. It's good on the Pro and it's also compatible with the new Air as well. Mm -hmm. And again, um, like the other devices, they were available to order on Tuesday um, and uh, they you could pre-order on Tuesday and available on Friday, the Apple Pencil is one twenty nine, I believe. I believe uh, it is, is one twenty nine. Yes. Yep. And the Magic Keyboard is three forty nine. Yeah. So that's for the, the thirteen inch. And, and the I price think the jumped 11 up. Inch, yeah. Yeah. The eleven inch is two ninety nine, and the thirteen inch uh, is three forty nine. And the so benefit, and a bit real quick, the benefit to the new Magic Keyboards is the trackpad is bigger and they have a function keys row. So if you're used to doing the functions to do the brightness, to show the desktop, to do the music controls, um, to do those different things, there is a function row for that when before you had to do a combination of pressing function in this and function in that. Now it just has a whole row, just function keys. Yep. And um, they did throw in, you know, kind of like, I won't say a throwaway, but just to like, oh, yeah, by the way, they did um, talk about the um, standard iPad, the non-Air and the non-Pro to say, hey, they're still there. Um, if you want to get in on that, you can do that as well. So that's pretty much what was announced during the event. Um, I did want to ask you, were you expecting uh, any more products from this event? Nope. Because again, this event ran like less than 40 minutes. Nope. Um, iPads and Apple pencils. I was kind of hoping they would, wouldn't. I don't know why, but I was assuming that, well, not, not assuming. I thought the current lineup as it stands of iPads was enough because you've got mm -hmm. the iPad Pro 12.9 inch. You've got the iPad Pro 11 inch. You've got the iPad Air with uh, the uh, M2 processor. Um, so I think those, the combination of those three and the newer iPad 9th generation with the new look, it just doesn't have the features. I thought those four were just fine, but Apple was like, nope, we give it you Give more. me something else. And again, I think that's because that all the new technology yeah, they're about software. to announce, yeah. they need to have devices compatible. Yep. Um, for me selfishly because it's something I want. I was mm -hmm. hoping to at least maybe see something um, from the um, the AirPod line. I was hoping because uh, we haven't okay. had right, a refresh right, right. in the AirPod Maxes since they were first launched. Mm -hmm. um, so I was hoping maybe they were going to slide into one more thing or say, oh yeah, you know, to go along with your new iPad Pro, you can listen to your music while you mix it on uh, garage band or mm -hmm. whatever you're mixing, whatever your audio. So selfishly, I was hoping for, um, you know, a new over the ear, um, headphones because I do want a pair. Um, but I was hoping to get a pair of the, uh, AirPod maxes. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so that pretty much covers the products in the event. I did want to get your thoughts on a couple things as it relates to the event itself. Um, again, this was a pre-recorded, pre-produced, um, uh, production, um, since COVID, this has basically been the, the way of the land, uh, for Apple, uh, doing its Apple events, um, and any of its keynotes. Um, 
since this event was only 35, 40 minutes, mm-hmm. um, were you surprised that they actually did an event and not just, um, you know, through the, throw the video up on the, do a press release basically? Uh, it makes sense for them to do a, a pre-recorded event because the iPad Air and the specifically the iPad Pro is, I guess, Apple's marquee products as far as uh, mobile devices. You think of the iPhones and then you think of the iPad. You know, now, if they just announced a new iPad, absolutely, you know, throw a press release up. But since they did announce a additional size to the iPad Air and then the new thinner and the OLED and all that stuff for the iPad Pro, it makes sense for them to do an event. But it makes sense now also that it was short. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's been, um, you know, it seems that some people are happier with the shorter pre record events. To me, it's one of those things where it's like a, a divide. I mentioned on DTNS. It's like a divide of basically pre pandemic events and post pandemic events. You know, if it was a live in person event, then sure, let's stream it, let's put it out there. Um, I, you know, I appreciate an Apple event. I'm, I'm not going to not tune in. But if this was just the video thrown up and a press release, I would have been fine with that as well. It mm-hmm. wouldn't have been like one of those things where, oh my gosh, I have to tune in, especially since they um, move the time up. Typically, these Apple events um, start about uh, 1 p.m. Eastern and 10 a.m. Um, Pacific. But this particular event it started at 7 a.m pacific and 10 a.m eastern which is a um departure from uh apple's typical event activity and apple is known for you know this is how we do things we're going to stick to it we're going to keep going with this and this was um definitely a uh, a change of pace um having the west coast folks get up super early for an event yeah man get people get it out of the way get people on with their day <laughs> that's apples i'm assuming yeah. that's what especially apple's since it process. was less than 40 minutes right right yeah all right um purchases are you anticipating purchasing any of the products from the let loose event no well no nope <laughs> <laughs> are you sure uh, to no. <laughs> well, well, I was going to say, like I mentioned, I, I was getting, I would be interested in getting my daughter into um, encouraging, encouraging her to, you know, go farther in her art journey. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to spend a thousand dollars to do that. <laughs> <laughs> she has a iPad ninth generation mm-hmm. and that works for her. Like I said, Procreate works for that. Um, she has the the Logitech Crayola stylus, which is like right below the Apple Pencil. Mm. Um, her birthday is coming up in June, so maybe she'll get. I'll get her the first generation Apple Pencil to where she can take mm-hmm. advantage of some of the extra functionality, the pressure sensitivity. You know, don't sleep on the original Apple pencil. It has a lot of features and it's yeah. still, and it's expensive still, <laughs> right? The, Didn't drop in price. Right. The Apple pencil uh, USB-C is only $79, which is like the next version up. And then you've mm-hmm. got the Apple pencil two, which is like $129. And then you've got the Apple pencil pro, uh, which is $129 as well. The original Apple pencil, you know, don't sleep on it. It's got, uh, pixel perfect precision. It's got low latency. It's got tilt sensitivity. It's got pressure sensitivity. It doesn't have the ability to magnetically attach to an iPad. So you got to pop the little top off and plug it in to charge it up, which is a bummer. Um, you know, it doesn't have the hover. It doesn't have the barrel roll and the squeeze and the double tap. And it doesn't have find my, but for a 14 year old, I really don't care. <laughs> so <laughs> all that to say, uh, you know, maybe for her birthday, we'll get, I'll get her an Apple pencil and then put her in some procreate classes. But that is about it. Um, I asked my wife, does she want anything? She's like, she really does not want <laughs> me to buy her technology 
for her special days. So that's birthday. That is Mother's Day. Christmas, she, she'll allow it. But for Mother's Day, don't be getting me stuff you want me to have. <laughs> Get me Get stuff, me stuff that, that I, I want. <laughs> right, right. So Ixnay on the Technology Day for Mother's Day, May. <laughs> <laughs> so the answer is no. Uh, yeah. I currently have a 12.9 inch iPad Pro and I have the current Magic Key, uh, Magic Keyboard. And I don't use them enough to warrant buying any more. You know, I use my iPad sparingly. You know, uh, I may use it every once in a while when I'm away from home, but I'm not doing heavy stuff. And when I'm away from home, if I need to do something heavy, I just use my MacBook, so I'm fine. I um, have mentioned before that I was waiting for a new iPad Pro, so I do think I am going to pick up the uh, 11 inch, the 13 inch, the the even the previous 12.9 i was like this is way too large for me it'll grow on you i i said the same exact thing until i got one and really? i was like the it's it's um it's a little heavy mm -hmm. when you're trying to put it on your lap and of course the magic keyboard is not a laptop so you know you have to place it on something mm -hmm. but when you place it on something or when you take it off the keyboard i mean yeah off the magic keyboard mm -hmm. and like for instance i lay on my bed and use it or mm -hmm. I'm watching and I'm watching I'm I don't want to disturb my wife and I don't want mm -hmm. oh, let me re rephrase it I don't want to monopolize the TV right <laughs> so you know especially now basketball season NBA yeah. playoffs is on I'm watching basketball a lot more um, but I don't want to monopolize the TV man having that big old screen and just laying on the bed and watching a basketball game and then being able to minimize the screen and like do something else like check email mm -hmm. or scroll through social media and the screen be big enough to where you can put the tv window air quotes in the corner where you can like split the screen and still be able to see and do something else or just have it like in smaller up in the corner while you're doing something else that screen mm -hmm. it's like oh this real estate is like useful right so don't all that to say i would go into the store and actually look at it um because that that screen, I, it's it's inexpensive. It's cheaper for the eleven inch, but you use that. You use all that twelve point nine or thirty in this case thirteen inch screen. If you're getting the new one, you mm -hmm. use all that space. It's not wasted space. I put it like that. I use mostly my iPad for entertainment purposes, reading. Well, most you're using of my it books. for the show, right? Yeah, I use it for the show for my notes and mm -hmm. and that type of thing. But. Um, Definitely doing that. I'll definitely probably pick up the pencil. I may pick up the keyboard. I don't do a lot of typing mm -hmm. on my iPad. So I'm like, I don't know if I need that. Uh, um, do, does the does the folio, the, the regular old iPad folio work for the the 13 inch iPad Pro? Did they come out with a, a little? I don't nine? think they came out with a new folio. Um, you know what I mean? The one that just folds up and covers. Yeah, the screen. and like it has a magic screen where it kind of like covers. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think they did. No, I, I think it's didn't. just the the same one they already. Yes, yeah, just the regular smart. Well, it says new. Right. Well, so the iPad Pro is thirteen inch versus the twelve point nine. I think right. So it difference. would need to be bigger. So it would have to yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um. Yeah. So I don't know about the the magic keyboard. Like I said. I don't so, use it really enough. So let me the ask. Mm -hmm. So are you going for the iPad Pro over the iPad Air? Yes, I do want a Pro. Okay. I do All want right. a Pro. Yeah, I had a regular, I've had regular iPads and regular and the Airs before, but I like the Pro line better. So um, I'm going to stick with the Pro. All right. Uh, so, so yeah, so I'll probably pick that up. Um, Again, I didn't pre-order it because I was like, I don't have to worry about it selling it out. I can, you know, order anytime and get here or slide into a store um, and check it out. So, uh, but yeah, I think I'm definitely going to get the, I said the 11 inch. Now you got me thinking about the 13 inch. I don't know, but uh, and they definitely do have one a, of them. Oh, and they do. I'm on Apple's website now and they do have a smart folio for the iPad Pro 13 inch as well as the smart folio for the 
iPad Pro 11 inch. So that's the one that just folds over the screen and then you can kind of fold it on itself as a, to make a stand. So you had to make a stand. Yeah. 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 And like that's the one I have now where it has mm-hmm. a stand on it. Um, like I said, I don't really type that much on it because it's more for entertainment. I'm like doing anything hardcore, but thinking I mean, I- because I have my, you know, I have the 16 inch um, M2 Pro and that it's large. <laughs> and it's one of those things where it's like, I don't really want to lug it anywhere. So if, I don't know, we'll see. I'm <laughs> open. I'm open to kind of see what it is, but uh, I'm definitely picking up something uh, from this Apple event. I haven't bought really anything, any Apple product since I think I got the my phone, the 14 uh, Pro, because it hasn't been a... No AirPods. Uh, there, no AirPods, no iPads. Didn't I pick already up a new have MacBook. the. I already have a you know relatively new MacBook, so yeah. So this will be like my first time buying something in, in a minute. So I'm excited to get the Apple packaging and to unpackage it. So all right, all right. definitely uh, picking that up. So that is going to wrap it up for the lowdown. And I do believe, looking at our time, this is just basically going to be an all Apple event show. Next week, we'll come back with a second string and for the culture. But I do want to make sure we give you the tech tip of the week. So we're going to definitely head on into the hookup. Um, Brother Tech, what's our tech tip of the week? All right. All right. Um, So gestures, we really don't use gestures on our iPhone. But I did want to highlight this two finger select all gesture. So think of like if you're checking your email and you need to select a bunch of emails and you want to mark them all as red or you want to archive them or delete them. Instead of selecting the select option and then individually tapping each email, if on your mail you take two fingers and swipe down on all the messages, it'll automatically select all the messages that you highlighted and then you can move them to a folder, mark them all as red, delete them. So this two finger gesture works if you like trying to select multiple things. Um, it mostly works in native apps. So you think of the messages app, you think of the mail app, you think of notes, you think of reminders, but any multiple selections, you can use this two finger gesture instead of, like I said, selecting the select button or select option and then individually mm-hmm. clicking all of the um, items that you want to delete. So that's my tip for the week. If you want to save you some time and quickly select multiple items to delete or move or whatever, use the two finger swipe gesture. Nice. Thanks for that tech tip. Again, that is going to or wrap up the basically all Apple announcement show that we have this week. Brother Tech, where can the people find you? Sure. You can find me all over the internet at Brother Tech. That's B-R-O-T-H-A-T-E-C-H. And you can find me at Tech Savvy Diva pretty much everywhere you are on the internet. Again, um, to connect, to comment, to share, and to support our show, you can head on over to snobwestcast.com to get all of the details. And with that, we will see you guys next week. Peace. Bye, everybody.